Oh. <laughs> no, I don't want to have the problem after you. It's like, yeah, cautionary. Like moving the problem here. along. It's been a week. Yeah, I mean, if I'm taking this, it's the last time you've seen me, so no. <laughs> no. Um, I was born and raised in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. And people ask me, Paula, what is your solution for the conflict in the Middle East? Well, I'll tell you. I packed and I got the fuck out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I teach uh, Hebrew to kids online nowadays. And you know, well, maybe you don't. Hebrew has a lot of weird sounds in the language, like Half of the time, these kids think we have collectivity issues. <laughs> Their parents still think that I'm using emotions. Yes. <laughs> So, you realize that I have a low voice by now, right? Deep voice, I should say. So I live by myself, but my neighbors think that I live with a man. <laughs> <laughs> During the pandemic, I was lonely, I bought myself tons of plants, and everybody's like, Paula, you should start talking to your plants. I did, I, I told them the story of my life. <laughs> they died. <laughs> Because my, my, my neighbors think that I live with a man, when I'm going through a dry spell, I don't want to disappoint them. So, you know, I'm standing next to the mutual wall, and I'm yelling, Are you ready for me, naughty girl? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> and I make a point to answer, so it's clear. <laughs> the other day, I ran into my neighbor, and she got me off guard and she was like, hey, I need to replace a few of the light bulbs in my apartment. Can you send me that man you live with? I'm like, the man? Oh, <laughs> sure, the man. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, this naughty girl is not ready, he's yours. <laughs> but you know, I grew up with my voice, so I'm used to it. I grew up with a Shaquille O'Neal voice, this is it. <laughs> It gets a little weird when I take a man home for the first time. Because my voice in the morning is deeper. <laughs> and we wake up and the guy's like, good morning. What's up? <laughs> they always have the same reaction. They're like, wait a second, grab the black. And they're like, oh, OK. <laughs> still a woman. Yes, still a woman. <laughs> Yeah, because I know how to hide my dick really well. <laughs> well, okay, let me tell you what I love. I love a man in a good suit, which is why I'm bad for funeral homes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going only once a week now. I was at a funeral. And everybody was mourning and grieving the dead guy, and all the men were wearing suits. And I just looked around, got so turned on, and said, "Ha! Ah, I just want to sleep with all of you." <laughs> not, not at once. Like one after the other. Okay. Have the suit on with you after this. We're listening. Okay. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> This is not a girl who wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> so at the funeral, I walked next to the casket. It was an open casket, right? And the guy was wearing a suit. And he looked so hot. I mean, he was cold. <laughs> but he was hot at the same time. <laughs> it's just a weird moment to see your friend for the first time wearing a suit. <laughs> My mom is a coroner. <laughs> now you understand, my mom is a coroner. But you know, the thing is that with my accent, a lot of people think that I tell them that she's working a coroner. She's not a prostitute. She's working with dead people. When I was a kid, she used to take me a lot with her to, to her work. So basically, the, play, um, the morgue was my playground. <laughs> so you know when my friends, my girlfriends were playing tea parties with dolls, 
I played dress up parties with prostitutes who overdosed for the eight hours. It was me. Okay, I, I was at the gym earlier today. I, never, I got confused, so I have a question for you, a real question. What is the age limit to bring your son to the ladies' changing room nowadays? Ooh, good question. 25, 30? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Because this woman, she came into the room holding hands with, he was my height, I'm 5'10". He smiled, he had braces, he was hitting puberty while watching me. <laughs> so after he finished shaving, we got a matching tattoo. <laughs> We're engaged, so I think it's going pretty well, right? So I say that I'm 5'10", right? And, you know, we women, you agree with me, we lie about a lot of things. Sure. Right, of course. But we don't lie about our height. <laughs> Thanks for the new one. We don't lie about our height because we're not judged by it. You know, it's not like if I'm writing on a dating profile that I'm 5'10", I mean that I'm 6'2", and I'll get to the date and I'll be a little shorter. No guy will be like, damn! I hate that she's shorter than me. <laughs> But we lie about our age, you lie about your height. Like, You have no idea how many dates I'm going and the guy who claimed to be 5'10 or 5'11, I get to the date and the guy's like barely at my ear level. It's like I'm using their heads on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> But we lie about our age, because that's what we're judged about. True. So, right? Yeah. I see so, it on dating yeah. apps. They lie. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> they tell you on the first date. Oh yeah? Well, if they yeah. tell you. Because here's the thing, I stopped saying my real age when I was 25. Oh, I was done. I'm not saying my real age. If a guy tells you that she's 32, she's 95. <laughs> Nowadays, if someone asks me how old I am, I'm like, I'm 5'10". <laughs> <laughs> how old are you? Uh, 142 pounds. <laughs> Try the list of facts. <laughs>